Our probably best strategy, honestly, lately has been cold calling. That might surprise a lot of people because honestly, cold calling didn't work that well for us two, three, four years ago. It was always the least. It was always on the chopping block and it just never was that much of an ROI on cold calling. But lately it, it has been. What's going on, guys? Um, this is the in, Indie Investor Pod uh, with Brett Snodgrass. I am Ronnie Reese. Uh, Brett, how are you doing today, man? Good, Ronnie. Good. I'm glad to be back doing the Indie Investor. I was actually looking back our last episode, so I'm excited to be back on this uh, weekly podcast and uh, doing it with you, doing it with other people from the Simple Quarters team, doing it with other indie locals. So if you are interested and you got some wisdom on Indianapolis real estate, love to chat with you about it. Oh, no, definitely for sure. Um, we This podcast is all about indie, everything that's happening here. We are a, you know, what have been maybe like a, a smaller major market, um, but other people have been figuring out, hey, there are some nuggets and some money and some opportunities to be had in Indianapolis, um, and it don't cost as much. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. so that's why it's important. <laughs> that's why people are here. But, um, you know, but we, we want to talk about some of the costs and just marketing, what's going on in Indianapolis, how we're marketing, how we're having to pivot, you know, um, with our marketing, what we're using um, and things like that. So, Brett, you know, hey, you're kind of overseeing all of that. You know um, what? I know what we've done in the past. I mean, we have, you know, we've done a lot of cold calling. Um, we definitely, you know, love mailers, um, you know, and I'd love getting those PPC ads, you know, because I know I know exactly what's going on with those sellers when those call comes. But, you know, what are we doing now, um, you know, that you feel like is working well for us? Well, if you guys listened to uh, the past episode that we just did, kind of getting a market update, we talked about pivoting and marketing is just no different than that. But I think it's important to not stop. Uh, I think a lot of people with the climate and the season of the Indianapolis real estate market that they've really pulled back, that they've stopped. And I think that that's a mistake. I think you have this big gap in deal flow and, and opportunities that kind of come your way. So uh, I would say don't don't stop, but you might need to pivot. And I think it's more crucial than ever to track and to really dig in and see what is working. Uh, because what, what what's working today might not have worked two, three years ago. Um, and what didn't work back then might be working uh, today. So uh, just to really track that, I think it's really important. So marketing's huge. Every business has marketing. It's it's really important to have your dollars go as far as you can. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do here at Simple Quarters. Um, so some of the different ways that we're doing uh, our marketing. So number one, our probably best strategy, honestly, lately has been still the cold calling. And yep. uh that might surprise a lot of people because honestly, cold calling didn't work that well for us two, three, four years ago. It was always the least. It was always on the chopping block. Don't know if we're going to keep it. Don't know if we're if if we are. And it just never was that much of an ROI on cold calling. Uh, mm-hmm. But lately, it it has been. Maybe it's just uh, I just see more leads. We generate the most leads from cold calling, and. Um, how that works is we use a service, they send us over the leads and uh, that's been our best strategy is, is cold calling. So if you're cold calling yourself, great. Uh, getting that list and, and making sure you're cold calling it. If you have a service doing it, great. I would say if you do have a service, make sure that their connection is good. Make sure that their English is good, right? Because you guys get a lot of those cold calls from people with broken English and you can tell that you just don't want to want to speak with them. So if it's international type of company, uh, make sure their, their English is good. Texting has been on the chopping block for Mm -hmm. many months and years. There's been some, you know, legalities, uh, legal types of things of other companies coming and going, and they've been putting some restrictions on them. We're still doing light texting. We're definitely not doing it as much as we were doing it, but uh, we're still doing light texting and it's a pretty inexpensive way uh, to to do your marketing. However, I mean, we used to never get texts. We, ne- we would never get texts about properties or never get texts about other things. And now you're getting what, two, three, four, five a day on either properties or some other types of service. So again, it's it's competitive. Uh, there's some restrictions on there. We use a service again. 
that kind of does the texting, but that's, that's one other way. And I'm going to pass this over to you, Ronnie, because, uh, you know, again, old school marketing, old school, just the power of relationships and networking. And I think that what the market has done here in Indianapolis and in all of the major cities, it's made people extremely lazy. And mm -hmm. it used to be that people would say, oh, you got to go to the networking clubs. You got to go to the local RIAs. You got to go network. You got to get referrals. You got to do some of that, host your own meetup. And people have stopped doing a lot of that. And I think one thing that's helped separate us is we've continuously done our meetups. We've continuously gone to Syria. You got a community member of Syria last year. Mm -hmm. We've been a part of it. We have the booth where our face is still out there. So uh, some of the other major players uh, or, or, you know, small or big guys, they've been taking a back seat, not doing some of those things. I think that's been really um, great for us with our branding and still getting our networking face out there. But I know you've got, you get a lot of deals from wholesalers and you, mm -hmm. we get a lot of deals from referrals. Talk to us about just the importance of that um, from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to marketing, you know, like you said, going to those events and stuff like that, but just always just letting people know who and where you are um, and what you do. Um, that matters. That matters a lot. Um, and so it's just really just like the power of relationship and referrals. I um, had some friends that were like, hey, Ronnie, let's go out on, on a boat and let's chill. Um, and I only knew one person on the boat. So let me take that back. It was a friend, only one person on the boat. But he introduced me to uh, like six other people that were highly successful in other arenas um, not that were not related to real estate. And so, you know, that happened like last year uh, when we went on the water. Uh, but just yesterday, I got a call um, from one of the guys on the boat. And he was like, hey, um, I know you're in real estate. I got a family friend that's in a situation. You know, I don't want to take it on. But can you talk with them and see what's going on. Um, and so I was able to talk with the family member, you know, um, and it looks like it's going to be, a, it's a really good match as far as them having a problem and, and us feeling like, Hey, we can probably provide a good solution for it. And again, that's just from relationships and referrals. And then going again, going back to what Brett said, just that belly to belly time, spending time, you know what I'm saying? With people, um, you know, people remember that those impressions and stuff. Um, and it was just nice to be able to get a referral that didn't cost me anything except some time, you know, 10 months ago, <laughs> like yeah, I wasn't yeah. thinking about, you know, so, um, and it's also too, it goes to just kind of just, you know, treating people right. Um, because, you know, there's a, there's a wholesaler, you know what I'm saying? That I think he's out in Florida. Um, but you know, he's always calling me first, you know what I'm saying? With, with his deals, um, you know, and or with his, with his opportunities, you know, and I'll be able to tell him up front, like, Hey, this is not, this is not, this is not a good opportunity. This is a good opportunity. But again, it's just from the power of relationships and us just, connecting as people first um before just the transactions of you know hey what can you offer me how much you want to do in, in all that haggling you know um so that's what's going to kind of help us get forward you know um and then also to listening three rather listening to other wholesalers calling them making a note in the market like hey we haven't seen much transaction or you know I'm saying, from you guys and uh, what's going on you know and listening to their problems and figuring out oh wait no they're having issues too but then when they get something you know the first person they call, you know, is me because, you know, I just reached out to them to check in to see how they were doing as a person. And then also to how they're doing it as a company, because I noticed, you know, something and maybe they might, you know, didn't want to say anything, but, you know, they felt it was safe to be able to talk with me about those things. So, you know, the power of relationships um, is helping. Again, I'm a New York Knicks fan for you the people that might be listening. I live in here in Indianapolis. I'm a New York Knicks fan. But if you watch what's happening with the Knicks, they're getting their friends together. You know, Jalen Brunson has his friends together and they're, you know, people that they like and they're working together and they're trying to figure out he's taking less money <laughs> to be able to um, try to have a win long-term success. And sometimes it's what you have to do, you know what I'm saying, just in real estate. You know, you might not make as much on a deal, you know what I'm saying, but again, you trust a relationship, you know that things are going to happen and then we can win together. So that's all, you know, um, that's what I'm doing, just utilizing the power of relationships in order to help everybody win. Yes, no, definitely. And uh, we've been we've been doing that well. I know we did a deal uh, a couple months ago that uh, was, again, just a family friend, you know, relative of 
one, one of the members on our team. Again, that was a, a just a great referral um, property. And uh, just don't, don't underestimate the power of networking uh, and, and referrals. You never know what's going to kind of uh, come down the pipe. We also bought a property from one of our lenders. So we, we work a lot with uh, passive investors and they invest with, with simple quarters with their money. But, uh, one of them had a property he needed to sell. And, uh, that was another, another referral, right? Uh, so never underestimate the power of just going to these events, networking, uh, letting people know and, uh, kind of go from there. We got a referral from a title company the other day, cause we, had, we got a great relationship with a couple of title companies here. Um, I don't know if anything's going to come of it, but again, they're reaching out to us and, um, kind of going from there. Some other paid marketing strategies that we're also using is we've gone back to, uh, to pay-per-click. That's been, that's been something that PPC or pay-per-click, uh, that we've done in the past. Uh, again, it's an easier type of setup. You don't get that many leads from it, but typically the ones that you do get are okay. Um, we just started doing that a couple of months ago. So it's really too early to tell if it's, if it's working or not. Um, direct mail, um, has been down just to be honest. Uh, but we've, we've still been doing it, but just hearing some other people talk that their direct mail has been, been down. Cause again, we got some bigger players in the market and they're spending a lot of dollars on, on, on direct mail. And it could just be people are just, you know, holding onto their properties, right? They're just not, not as interested in, in calling you on that. Um, some other channels that we started to do is we've done TV in the past. We're starting to do radio. So those are a couple other channels that we've, uh, that we've gone a direction again, too early to tell on some of those, but we're trying to pivot and figure out different marketing strategies. But I think the key to all of it is tracking it, seeing what's working, but don't do try it a month. Don't try it two months. I typically say six months, six months is a good time frame to really see if something is, is working or not. Um, so that's, that's kind of everything that we're doing. Direct mail, PPC, cold calling, texting, radio, uh, slash TV. Um, never underestimate Again, sometimes it gets old, but social media, just again, branding, getting your, your face out there. Uh, and, and some of these channels, again, it's really just the branding of it all. It um, is. Trying to get more of that professional look. We actually just did our website, simplequarters.com. So again, we're spending some money. Again, we're trying to level up what we're doing. So it's just more professional. It's a brand. It's not maybe the guy next door that we used to all do just Joe wants to Smith wants to buy your house that lives down the street. It's more, here's our brand. Here's our company. Um, and we're here to serve you. There's a quote from uh, Beth Comstock and she says, marketing's job is never done. It's about perpetual motion. We must continue to innovate every day. So my question to you is out there, you know, how are you guys innovating? How are you pivoting? What are you doing? That's, that's different. What are you doing? That's new. What's working today might not have worked a year ago. What worked a year ago might not work today. So it's just constant uh, perpetual motion. Uh, Ron, anything else you just want to add uh, before we wrap up? Yeah, no, I would say, you know, one of the things that I'm also kind of noticing a, an intentional trend, you know, um, is the leveraging and working with other realtors, you know, realtors who have properties, um, you know, that maybe don't qualify and just really le trying to leverage those relationships because, you know, they're talking with a lot of sellers as well who have certain ideas about their property, but, um, you know, maybe things are a little bit different. So there's definitely an avenue, you know, where things could be, you know, built out and I'm seeing and talking with other guys in CG that, you know, they have system and processes around trying to just, you know, leverage those relationships as well. So there's something just to always kind of be thinking about again, that doesn't, that's, that's low cost, but you know, um, high, uh, you know, sweat equity in there, <laughs> belly, belly to phone calls and things like that. Does all yeah. And one other thing, uh, you know, you talked about, we're part of a mastermind group called the collective genius. I'm part of a couple of other groups, uh, that I can really just pick up the phone and, and, and talk to somebody. I, t I call, pick up the phone and talk to another Indianapolis investor yesterday. I'm like, Hey, what's going on? What are you guys kind of seeing? And it was just nice just to have that yes. conversation with someone else, uh, the meaning of the minds. And if you don't have that, then I know Ronnie would love to be that for you. Uh, we, our company is simple quarters. We would love to, to be that for you and just to help you out. Uh, we help a lot of other wholesalers. We help a lot of other investors. 
and, and how can we do this thing together? Uh, having together. that abundance mindset, I think is, is important. We're all in this together and uh, just trying to raise each other up here in Indianapolis, make it an amazing community, make it an amazing real estate investor environment, especially for the local people, right? We, we need to really help each other out and uh, really, um, you know, build up our communities. Um, and that's what we're here to do. So that's a wrap. I think with the Indian Investor Podcast today, make sure again, if you want to check out our simplequarters.com website, check that out. Everything is going to be on our Simple Quarters website, the Indian Investor Podcast. We're doing a radio show called The Helpful Home Buyers. We have blogs on there. Our properties are on there. Even if you want to sell us a property, you can put that on there or give us a ring as well. And if you want to passively invest with us, that we're always here to bring that opportunity for people. People have money that are just sitting on the sidelines. I talked to a guy today saying, I got $300,000 sitting in the bank that is making nothing. And I was like, well, that's not good. That's not cool. What can we do with it? What do, what do we want to do? So we're always willing to talk to people uh, just about how we can put their money to work as well. So this is a wrap in the Investor Podcast. See you guys next time. Later.